Hey, Mr. X? Um. <sighs> what did he buy now? I'm gonna don't kill see him. Me. Please don't see me. Please don't see me. Please don't see me. Please don't see me. Where are you? Where is he at? I can never find that guy. As the Extreme channel is pushing towards 50,000 subscribers, these are just a few of the statues we are giving away on the journey there. If you want to know how to win one, stay tuned for later in the video. Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. My name is Mr. X, this is the Extreme channel, and a big portion of this channel is all about extreme collectibles. And this is arguably the most extreme collectible I've ever had on the channel. Therefore, I do apologize for some of the lighting and the sound. It's going to be off more than usual simply for the fact there's not a good place to video this guy. Believe it or not, the weight in the package of everything he came in was almost 800 pounds. And we're gonna talk all about that today. We're still gonna do a traditional review. You know, when I ordered this $12,000 statue over a year ago, I was super excited. And then I saw pictures of it and it didn't look like the paint job was true to what I thought Iron Man should be. However, Queen Studios who manufactured this, I can tell you in person, it is much better. I'm gonna do my best to try and capture that on video today for you guys. I had a lot of fun in the intro, and as a spoiler, I think this piece is absolutely amazing. I think Queen Studios knocked it out of the park. This has kind of been a dream of mine. Well, Iron Man isn't necessarily my favorite comic character or MCU character because this is from the Mark 7 of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I've always dreamt of having a life-size Iron Man, simply for the fact that I could fulfill my childhood fantasies of having an Iron Man suit and pretend to Maybe one day I need to jump inside this guy. God, that sounds sexual. Anyway, I've only owned one other true life-size piece. That is Han Solo in Carbonite. But I've had over 50 different life-size busts. Here's actually an older countdown of all the different life-size busts I've owned. And I never saw a need to get anything below the chest or the belly button, actually have legs on the statue, until now. Now that I have this in hand, I am ecstatic. I think this is unbelievable has a ton of cool different options. So today we're actually gonna do the review backwards. We always look at five categories and we're gonna do them in reverse order. I think it sits better with this piece if we talk about it like that. And also something to note, if you follow me on social media, you've probably seen quite a few videos of him lately. You know he's not standing on his base. I'll talk more about that in design towards the end of this video. For now, let's kick it off with my final category I usually talk about. Does this have the X factor? Is this cool? Is this one of the coolest collectibles in the collection? You walk by it, it immediately commands your attention. And while size plays a big portion in that, because trust me, size matters. That's what she said. I don't think it's a one-all, true-all. However, this piece, the size is very impressive because it kind of fulfills some of those childhood fantasies I have. And everything is done really well, which you're gonna see. I do say this is an amazing statue. It does have the X factor. It is a five out of five. And as a spoiler, as we move further into this video, probably my new favorite collectible of the hundreds that I own. So much so that I'm really excited. I actually have Queen Studios Life Size Iron Spider on order, which I was a little bit on the fence, even though I put down the deposit. And now I think I wanna go in on their Mark 85, this piece right here. All right, value. Value is a really tough category for this guy because not very many people are going to buy a 11,500 statue plus another 1,500 to 2,000 for shipping. So you're 12 to 14,000 dollars for this. Now they only made 99 of them, so even if a lot of people wanted to spend that much money, they couldn't because it's pretty rare. But it's a piece of art. Art is subjective. So the way I usually rate the value of the statue is what will the resale value be like? Well, first of all, I can tell you this is going to be almost impossible to repack up and ship. Not only that, but just storing the box is a pain in the ass. A lot of people don't have a place they can store that big of a box. I have to pay for a storage unit. Then, if you do want to sell it, you're going to have a very limited amount of people that not only have the space to display this, but can drop twelve dollars to $14,000 on an unneeded collectible. Also, Robert Downey Jr. isn't technically in the MCU anymore. While this is from Avengers 1, one of the greatest movies out there, that movie's never going to be replayed, and while it will be loved for a long period of time, there's been what? over 75 suits after this one. So honestly, I think the value of this is a two out of five. It's not very good. 
I will never be able to sell this and get my money back. I will probably take a huge loss. So most likely, I will never sell it. That's not just about the money. I do love this. It's a fucking fantastic piece. Paint and Sculpt. This is one people really want to see. And as I said, one of the big concerns, particularly with the paint, is that it was too matte. It was too plain. There was no shine to it. Now, clearly, you wouldn't want a reflective surface on the paint, but I think they did an awesome job. And I have as many lights as I can on this, but unfortunately, it's just kind of the normal lighting in my basement. But check out the close-up details of the paint and sculpt. And we'll do the base and the body separately. And again, I'll talk a little bit more about why we're doing that separately in design. When it comes to paint and sculpt, pretty basic. Here's the nameplate that I hate more than anything in the world. It's just a sticker that's put on there, so that makes it even worse in my opinion. And one of the reasons why I'm leaning towards not displaying the base. But the paint's pretty clean, and granted there's only the silver, white, and black. But uh, silver along the edge down here, and then kind of the middle of the circumference of the circle. And then it has this black with ridges and then speckles all throughout. Almost gives it like a space vibe, and I kind of like that. But almost like a venting on the underside of the red rim here. Now this is under normal lights. I don't have any studio lights or anything like that on it right now, just lights from the ceiling. So the red, I think, is the perfect Iron Man red. It has a nice uh, uh, matte finish to it, but it's not too bright, and it does vary from the actual suit. So I like that they did that so it's not too monotonous. And right now that is turned off. I don't have uh, the light on for the uh, paint and sculpt here. But overall it looks really good. Other than the nameplate, which we kind of already talked about, I really can't criticize much. I think uh, uh, it's well done. Nothing deserving of a you know, eleven dollars or $12,000 piece, but still very cool addition overall. Now, we're not going to take an inordinate uh, amount of time to study every little part of the body here. I don't want to say this in a derogatory sense, but a lot of it's the same. So first of all, I just want to show the contrast between the paint colors. So here I have some brighter lights shining on it. And here it's just kind of some of the room lights. You see a little bit reflection of the brighter lights. It isn't a super shiny metallic uh, red. It is more of kind of that race car red. Um, the camera is almost picking up like an orange hue that really isn't there. It's a deeper uh, race car red. And then the gold too also isn't really a flashy, shiny gold. Like I think it was the um, the suit he used in Iron Man 3. I hated that simply ju just for the colors. I forget which mark that was. But the colors, I think they did a really nice job. The silver, obviously that's not kind of a... a, a directive or creative choice because it's exactly what it was in the movie balances it well it, it doesn't look like a uh, plastic material due to the paint but it doesn't look like a metal material and technically even though iron is a metal you know this is supposed to be iron man even though that's technically not accurate so i think regarding the exterior of the paint you can see more of it as we're going to do close-ups uh for some of the sculpt stuff it looks way better in person and i don't think it's translating into camera but I think they did a really nice job overall. I think if it was shiny and reflective, it would have looked cheesy. So I'm a fan of what they did. I think Queen Studios made the absolute right decision going the direction they did. And if I do end up getting the Mark 85, it'll be interesting to see that difference. Now regarding the armor and the sculpt, for the majority of it, it's uh, kind of like plating on top of each other. And again, very accurate to the movie. Uh, where it was all screwed in together. If you recall in Iron Man 1 when he put on the Mark III, which is also a very cool suit, how everything just, just kind of fit. Now, what I do like is you do see uh, some of those details on the front and a lot more in the back we're gonna look at. Everything from almost like venting or chains right down there. And then the um, articulation he needed in his suit from the screws on the side to kind of this coil-like effect over here and you also see that in his hands where they're bent at the fingers. There's his uh, phasers there, uh, not phasers, the, the blasters. Arc reactor looks fine when it's not turned on, not good, not bad. I am a big fan of the Mark VI as well. Probably a, even a little bit bigger, but I don't think they'd make that. And then here you see a lot of the components that really uh, fasten the suit together. And we're gonna move to the side and the back where you can see a lot more of that detail. Even here, you see some pistons and hinges and rods and 
almost that, uh, some hoses they kind of put in there. So here is uh, his missile arsenal up here and I apologize for the lighting. So it is open, he does have his flaps open. Like he's about to take off or like a, a, maybe they're airing out. We'll talk more about that in concept. But that's where you start, start to see a lot more of that metallic detail. Now also, we, uh, we're not gonna talk about this in design, but you don't, um, you can remove these, but, and they leave decent sized keyholes, but they don't look too out of place because they're still painted. Even down here, some more of the circuitry. This is a little remedial, in my opinion. Doesn't You can definitely tell it's not real. I think it would have been neat if it had some, uh, a more of a realistic vibe to it. Kind of like these have up here. So a very cool Easter egg. Portrait looks great. It's clearly Iron Man. And again, you see the kind of the components where everything comes together. So it's almost like it's imperfect, but I think that's very intentional because that's how it was in the movie. That's what I love about not only the cinematic Marvel Universe, but even the DCU, how to an extent, they're trying to add as much realism as possible. And I say to an extent because a you know, billionaire who uh, creates his own armored suit like this probably isn't very realistic. I mean, unless Elon or Bill Gates can get their act together. So overall, I like it a lot. I think there's a lot of quarter scale statues out there, third scale statues that are better, or even some life-size busts that are better. But also I think you have to remember what they're working with, we didn't really look at the boots, is limited as well because they have to be accurate to the movie. And I think that they did 100%. All right, so let's talk about the sculpt first. I think it's fantastic. While there could have been a little more detail, especially for a life-size piece, I still think it's a four out of five. Really well done, I'm a fan. Paint kind of along those same lines. Like I said, maybe a little bit more shine would have made it perfect, but it's still damn really good and I hope that translated in the video. So that is also a four out of five. So let's talk about design. Now while I can't show you the full unboxing and assembly for obvious reasons that it was an 800 pound package and there were four and a half of us working on this, I can show you a little bit. Check out some of these photos. So had no clue this giant box via freight was arriving and my wife was helping the guy get it because I was on some Zoom calls and he said they had a huge bet in their office on what was inside. My wife had no idea this was coming so she doesn't, didn't know what was inside. I guess the guy could have read the side of it. But to give you perspective on how big this is, I'm a big guy, I'm six foot three. But it was a very cool box that actually had latches and it's actually a constructed box. But here it is without the top on. Now each of them comes with a plaque right here. While this is cool, unfortunately, they sent me the wrong person's plaque. So we'll see if I can get that fixed. I'm not so sure. But here it is open. The first was the arms and the body. And then the second layer had the base and a lot of the other pieces we're gonna look at. These are those other pieces I'm talking about right here. We were able to get his body inside. That probably weighs, I'm guessing, 200 to 350 pounds. There's my daughter on the base having some fun. And then if you follow social media, you know I was having a lot of fun with the Iron Man DeLorean. And here we were taking the box to our storage unit. Okay, a lot to talk about. Why is he not on his base? Before we talk about that, I kind of want to show you the pieces that you saw in the box. So his torso and legs are all one piece. His arms are a separate piece, minus these little pads on the side here. And actually the reason these pads are here, you can see this picture right here, underneath them are actually one of the light up features we're gonna talk about. He has four fins on the back. You saw that during paint and sculpt. Those are all separate pieces. And then of course his head is a separate piece that you also have to remove to turn on a light up feature. And when we were bringing down the torso, which was the hardest part, very heavy, we finally got it to the bottom of the stairs. I have a very narrow staircase. You can actually check it out in this comic video right here. We set him down on the ground while we prepared to move him over to the base. We had the base in place. The base is huge. It's overly large. It's about 44 inches wide. The other dimensions on this, I'm actually throwing up on the screen per Queen Studios website. If you're not smart enough to figure out centimeters to inches, there's an amazing tool called the internet you can use. We're going to talk about scale in a second. But anyway, we had him sitting here just waiting, and I noticed that he is very solid just sitting here. And that offers a few advantages for me. Number one, the base doesn't take up the tremendous amount of space. If you see my latest room tour right here, you actually know I'm a hoarder of collectibles. Two, while I think the base is pretty cool, 
I think it looks just as good sitting here. If you want to see what he looks like just sitting here, I'm going to post more stuff on the Extreme Channel social media. Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and Twitter. The link for those is in the description below. And honestly, getting him on the base, I know another YouTube channel I watch religiously, Art Statue Collector, that was the hardest part. You can actually check out his video in the card above. So while I sell off a whole bunch of my collectibles, because I do that at the end of every single month, and no, he will not be going up for sale, I make more and more room. Right now, I'm going to display him without the base. It's steady. I kind of like the look a little bit better, and it doesn't take up as much room. Eventually, when I sell off more and get rid of some of these shelves, I will put him on the base. If you want to know what collectibles are for sale, make sure you've not only liked this video, but you subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification. I launch videos for that at the end of every single month. And we talked a little bit about the light-up feature. His head, left arm, right arm, the palms light up, all take two AAA batteries each. The arc reactor in the middle actually uses a USB plug to charge. And it has a magnet on a spring that lets it go in and out. Now once it's charged, you actually use a remote control. There are a few different settings. First setting is just normal arc reactor on. To move to another setting, you turn it off and then turn it back on. There's a flashing one. There's one where it kind of circles around and then powers up. I would have liked this one if it just kept circling around, to be honest. So here is the light up feature on the base. It is a halo around the side, bright LED white light. It does have an on off switch at the back, right where the AC adapter plugs in. While the light up features are inconvenient because you have to kind of take it apart and each has their own switch to turn it on, I do like them in general, despite a mild inconvenience. Another thing with design, it came with another piece that I don't know where the hell it goes. Maybe it's for his jock, I don't know, it wasn't on the instructions. And when I'm filming this, I'm actually gonna see Queen Studios at their Vegas event, which has probably already happened by the time this aired, so I'll ask them. Now the last thing we wanna talk about is scale. So, per the MCU, they say that Tony Stark or Robert Downey Jr. is six foot one. In his Iron Man suit, he's six foot five, which would insinuate 77 inches. I can tell you right now, this is just under 79 inches. So it is slightly off scale. Those dimensions I threw up earlier are for him on his actual base. So overall design, light up feature could have been better. I think the base takes up too much room. I think the design is a three out of five. They could have saved some box space if the legs had been separate pieces. The light up features could have been more convenient. Scale's a little bit off. So that's why I give it the three out of five. It's not bad, but not good. So last, let's talk about the concept. Now, since I'm showing him without him on his base, I'm gonna do a stock photo right here. And as I said with the base, when you talk about paint and sculpt, it almost looks like this is somewhere it would sit. Maybe it's a charging station. I'm sure the arc reactor alone doesn't charge these. But this awesome, awesome base has the Avengers logo. I absolutely hate logos. Logos are a pain in the ass to me. This one, as we talked about, looks really cheap. But he's standing there in a museum pose, which to me, this is an empty suit of Iron Man. So it is ready to go. It is charging up, whether light is on or off. So I kind of like that part of it. And he looks tough. So even though it's a museum pose, he looks like he's ready to brawl. You know, obviously some of the vents and flaps are open, but maybe they're airing out. And technically, if you wanted to, you could display them without, even though I'm not a fan of that. And there's no mistake who this is, obviously, either. I think they did an amazing job with the likeness of the MCU suit. I think the concept is awesome. So I do give the concept a four out of five overall. It is very, very cool. I personally wouldn't have wanted anything more dynamic. So that's my summary, guys. I absolutely love this. It is now my favorite piece of my collection. Is it worth it? If you had the funds, would you go for this or another life-size piece? Throw that down in the comments below and also let me know, should I display it with or without the base? Like I said, I'm going to without the base for a while, for probably at least three to six months, and then I'll have to make that decision whether I put them on the base or not. And I asked you to comment because I read every single comment, and you could win a statue with that comment. We will be giving all of these statues away, plus additional ones, at every 5,000 subscriber milestone. To win one of these statues, all you have to do is make sure you've liked this video, you've subscribed to the channel, you've hit that bell notification, and then just drop a comment below. Every 5,000 subscriber milestone, we are going to do a random drawing and pick a random comment and give one of these statues away, plus some additional ones I'm not showing right now. The more videos you comment on, the higher your chances are to win. 
Hey, thanks for tuning in, guys. I really appreciate it. If it was your first time here, we do stuff like this all the time. So please make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification. Don't forget to comment. You could win a prize. You could win a statue, not this one. Thanks for tuning in. I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care.